Hey everyone and welcome back to my completionist playthrough of Diablo 2 on Hardcore, and we are slowly but surely nearing the end. Hopefully through completion and not death. <laughs> but anyway, before we do much here in Act 4, let us once again try our luck and gamble a few amulets from Jambalaya here. And of course the chance of getting anything good is extremely low as always, but still, we cannot give up hope. So let us look at this batch of amulets. Alright, really poor selection. Uh, but maybe next time. Maybe next time we're going to get something better, and hopefully there will be a next time. <laughs> hopefully we will survive long enough to have more chances of gambling some more amulets. But anyway, now we can properly start our adventure here in Act 4 and set out into those hellish wastelands. Uh, and even though this is a very straightforward act, uh, there will be still a few things I would like to discuss as we go through it. Here in this first zone, the threat level is usually not too high, as is evidenced here, but that's good. That will allow me to elaborate on some of these things I wanted to point out. Um, first off, this is definitely an act for all of us Frozen Orb enjoyers. We are going to get a lot of use out of this spell. Uh, of course, here we can fondly reminisce how devastating Frozen Orb was on Nightmare here in Act 4. This is, of course, not going to be nearly as good of a situation this time, uh, but um, it's still going to get the job done, even though we will have to work much harder for our kills here. But uh, anyway, this is partially because of um, the existence of guys like these. Uh, the fire immunes are quite plentiful in this act, uh, but even uh, monsters that aren't necessarily fire immune are usually resistant to all types of elemental damage and will simply be more responsive, I guess, uh, to frozen orbs, simply because of that cold mastery resistance decrease that frozen orb can benefit from. We're getting some potential gold here. Um, anyway, we still have to realize though that this is late game hell, so there are perils everywhere waiting for us. However, if we can maintain our focus and give this act our best effort, uh, this should be kind of a step down from at least some of those danger zones we've had to deal with in Act 3. However, Act 4 has two very clearly defined danger zones of its own. Uh, the first one is going to be the second zone here, the Plains of Despair, where Iswal is, so a zone we will have to thoroughly explore. Uh, but the problem in there is that uh, one of the potential monsters that can spawn there are the souls. And of course the wisest thing to do would be to simply reset in that kind of situation and uh, try again. Also let us get rid of that amplify damage. Uh, but anyway, when it comes to resetting for other monsters, I kind of don't want to do that. I would at least want to give it a try, even if we get those souls spawned for us. Because I ain't no wuss. <laughs> I ain't no puss. I don't want to be accused of cowardice. But of course we'll we'll see how it goes. I don't want to die stupidly either. So we shall see. Alright, another simple Saigon set gauntlets. I'm not even going to identify them. No point in doing that. Uh, but anyway, when it comes to cold immunes though, speaking about immunities of different monsters, there are just like three uh, monster types that are going to be cold immune. Uh, the first one is the whole line of grotesques, those demons that spawn the little guys. Uh, they're always going to be cold immune. Uh, then we have these static, like, trapped souls that are always going to distract Emilio. I'm kind of trying to look for one right now. They aren't showing up, but I'll try to uh, direct your attention to them the next time we see some of them. They are unfortunate when it comes to mercenaries. But of course they are going to distract them from uh, more important targets. Uh, and finally we of course have the lovely Oblivion Knights at the end. Okay, here we have the Plains of Despair. Let's just prepare ourselves mentally for that and see if we get those uh, souls spawned for us. I also wanted, speaking of trapped souls, I wanted to also speak about these containers that Whenever there's a spare moment, I try to activate them from afar because they don't work like chests, but rather like uh, barrels or urns 
in the fact that there is an animation associated with activating them when the sorceress will you know run up to them and do that kick and of course we don't want to be locked in that okay we have a nice greeting company there gotta stay on the move and just check out the danger level here we of course have 75 lightning resistance which doesn't really matter much when it comes to souls i'm going to try to have emilio and myself not a die instantly and uh, yeah of course you know it might seem like the damage is uh, not too bad sometimes but it can be extremely bursty and of course we might get a taste of that here well, they're really they're not giving us any room to breathe here Right, so I'm going to be liberally using the full rejuves on myself and Emilio, and we are already out of them. All right. You are probably screaming at me that I should just reset. <laughs> but uh, I am way too stubborn for that, I guess. And we'll keep on going for a little while. And then maybe when the situation calms itself, I will be able to get back to some of my other thoughts. To just calmly explain what I wanted to talk about. Oh yeah, these trapped souls I think I covered. Uh, yeah, whenever there's a spare moment a quick telekinesis is nice because we don't want to accidentally misclick on one of those and have our sorceress kind of come up to that uh, come up to that well, quote-unquote container and be locked for a moment in that kicking animation. And I hope you like the frozen orb sounds. The <laughs> yeah, this this is what gets your blood pumping, you know. This is what gets the adrenaline going. <laughs> Fortunately, the souls didn't have enough of a chance to display their ferocity, their danger, so far, and that's actually good. For anyone that's played this game, you know what I'm talking about, and if you're not familiar with the game, and you're not really seeing this this much so far, maybe it's for the best to, that you get spared from experiencing that, <laughs> the potential that these souls have. There are some straggler champions that we've battled before, but somehow went out of their range. Let's get some healing stuff. There are some stragglers somewhere over here. Just normal guys. I think I interrupted myself when I was talking about those danger zones of Act 4. Of course, one of them is right here because of the souls. Uh, but the other one is, of course, the Chaos Sanctuary at the end, which can never be underestimated. We're going to have to keep our full focus over there. All right, Iswell, where are you, buddy? I would like to get that quest done and get out of here. All right, there he is. Let's just get that quest prompt out of the way. Yeah, Emilio, of course, prioritizing these trapped soul guys. I meant these uh, cold immune guys over here, sometimes near the pole, near the pillar. Of course, prioritizing them over Iswal, as you would. Actually, since we got this quest done, let's immediately hand it in and also do some inventory management. 
And uh, also here we can check out the difference now that we're going to have between our fireball. It's basically like 2800 to 31. Uh, but now when we put these two skill points, one in Fire Mastery, one in Firebolt, it's basically 3000 to 3300. So a nice increase. A nice increase. Uh, but a more significant increase of our damage we might be able to talk about. Oh yeah, I didn't actually sell anything. We might be able to talk about a little bit later because I've been thinking ahead a little and uh, I would like to explain some of uh, my plans for the near future. Oh yeah, of course. Let's just quickly identify everything we have. All right, and now we can probably get some cash. Oh, well, not from this. Not from this either. And this we're just going to hold on to. And we had a belt. Let's check it out. All right, nothing too notable. Can get rid of it. At least that one thing sold for a little bit. All right now, let's pick up our stuff. Let's sort our stuff a little bit in our stash, and then we will be ready to go. Because of course uh, that ornate plate there dropped for us, and uh, it will also sell for a lot. Of course, if you use telekinesis, then you can do this. Like uh, close your Frederick cube and be in the stash menu. All right, now we can just look for the exit from this zone. Let's just leave those souls alone. Oh my. Oh my, let's not stop in our tracks, although I think we might have to go that way. It might be that uh, top left border where our exit lies. Jesus. Okay, let's just go past. Hopefully it's... okay, it is right here. The city of the gosh darned is going to be a much friendlier place. <laughs> and here at least we have... Uh, okay, we do have some... We do have the grotesques where we have to use fire against, and uh, we have a monster that is truly receptive to fire, these damned guys. They react very well to our fireballs. Of course, I'm trying to use a health potion from an empty slot. Alright, so let's just get a nice... Oh, okay. I guess we already have our... our waypoint. I just wanted to find a nice position to just have our op opponents on kind of one side, blocked by Emilio. Now let's, let's get some special guys killed here. And we will be on our way soon, I think. And that one is fire enchanted, so quite resistant to our fire damage. But anyway, let's keep on healing. Let's keep on rejuvenating ourselves. Let's maybe stay for a little while longer here before we have to descend into the River of Flame and see what awaits us there. My Hellforge plate, if that's not ethereal, that will sell as well. Well, we won't be able to fit anything right now into our stash. Let's do a little bit more management. And then we'll uh, come back for some stuff. We have the Mammoth. <clears throat> Not too much of an impressive HP affix. And where was that? Okay, Hellforge plate. I'm of course playing with fire a little bit because we don't have all of our resistance charms, but 
we are we are fine clearly withstands i don't think we've had this i'm pretty sure we didn't have this this is a uh, really nice blocking shield that doesn't have much of a strength requirement uh, so a nice find i guess okay this can sell nicely and let's just oh actually four sockets on that hellforge plate i think i'm going to hold on to it then all right, let's add our stuff to our collection, sort our inventory properly, get some potion refills and probably some town portal scrolls while we're at it as well. All right, and now we are ready. Now we are ready to go. Let me just double check everything. Yes. I really don't want to make a fatal mistake this far in the run. All right, let's see what the... What the opposition here is going to be. Sometimes you can get these abyss knights or abyssal knights. They can be a little annoying. But other than that, it shouldn't be too bad. Didn't I refill our potions? What happened here? We had two rows of mana. And I thought I was paying attention. <laughs> it's not a good sign. Oh, we do have the knights. You're also a notable opponent, kind of, are the Urdars, those big guys, kind of like the blunderbores from the previous acts, and they are kind of notable because they have 75 resistance to all elemental sources of damage, and they are a nice example of what I was talking about earlier, that they aren't immune to anything, but they are clearly the most receptive to something like uh, cold damage for a sorceress, when you have that cold mastery leveled up. Alright, and of course plenty of fire immunes besides that. This wire fleece is a source of cash. Alright, and here let's be on the lookout for any branching paths, because of course we have our Hellforge quest to do. And let's get rid of these... Dang, I was meant to say. Are our kind of uh, appetizer to Oblivion Knights later on, I guess. Not much here, but all right, here we have some options. Let's just clear out some of these monsters and take a better look around. Excuse me for <laughs> not talking too much, but yeah, this, uh, even though these monsters don't present that much of a danger level, like, especially these Abyss Knights, if Emilio takes a couple of hits, I guess it's, it's, uh, they can offer some bursty damage. And uh, yeah, really want to give my best effort here, this uh, late in the run. Hopefully give our, ourselves the best chances possible to successfully complete the run. Although, of course, Act 5 is going to be its own painful experience. <laughs> that is really going to step up the danger levels. We're going to have to contend with. Alright. We can take some stuff here, and we're due for a ref refill of all kinds of stuff. Uh, let's take a look into our, take a peek into our full rejuve reserves. Sort everything nicely. All right, moving on. Once we get our quest prompt here, that means that Hefatso and the Hellforge are nearby. So let's start the cleanup here. Let's not have any monsters interrupting our fight against Hefatso. I 
kind of undecided. I think the Abyss Knights also are more receptive to Frozen Orb rather than Fireball Spam, but of course we can combine the two. There is a little bit of uh, time to launch like two quick Fireballs in between um, a Frozen Orb. All right here, let's get rid of this guy. Let's actually pull him a little bit closer, a little bit further away or where the Hellforge Hell likely is. All right, Emilio, take his attention, please. And now let's get rid of Ooze Fang. And there we go. Wow, we are getting a few more notable items. Too bad this is nothing that we are particularly interested in. But anyway, on those uh, fire and cold immunes, we will see more and more uh, the fact that uh, well, Emilio is going to not have such an easy time killing them uh, this late in uh, in the game. Of course, everything has high HP, the area levels are high, and here we will be wishing that we had a good elite pole arm for him. All right, here comes Vatso. Let's pull him out of there and see what he has to offer. All right, there. Not too bad. Another grim wand that we cannot take apparently. Anyway, let's let's clear out the premises here. And we will talk about the Hellforge quest here on Hell. Of course, it can grant us a rune from 15 to 25 now. So from Hell to Gaul. Uh, of course, if we get unlucky, you know, it's going to be something like in between 15 to 20 that we've had our share of uh, some of those runes already. On the other hand, we are still yet to see a Lum rune, which is number 17. Not that any of these runes are going to be particularly useful for us right now, but some of them could potentially unlock some good rune words for the future. Maybe. Alright, let's get this business concluded then. And let us see. Alright, Mal. That is number 23, and it's a notable rune because it's used in like Cult Warms and Infinity. So, a good find in general, but not so much for us because, well, uh, these uh, advanced rune words, of course, uh, we are lacking a lot more other runes to actually be able to, to do them. We can sort of that here. We can ask Deckard Kane about some stuff and uh, see what we can get here for, for these things. All right, a nice 70k, and we also have a heart carver, which we also didn't uh, have, I think, for that uh, find item, <laughs> Barb Runs. This is also something that we will hold on to and add to our collection. I'm getting some new things, actually. All right, let's just get a few more potions. And we'll be ready for the final stretch of this, uh, of this act. Now that we have all of the, <laughs> all two of the uh, quests completed, now the only thing left to do is to get to Diablo somewhere in here making his residence all right let's just get into the chaos sanctuary and here we will of course want to fight our way through the lovely opposition that's always here and we're going to have to keep sniping these oblivion knights they're of course uh, really annoying in general especially for melee characters but even for a sorceress, as you can see, uh, when you get closer to them, even if a mercenary gets closer to them, 
they are going to be incentivized to run away and dodge our meteors and whatnot and just be extremely annoying. Of course, they are the source of all of the curses that we will want to get rid of, like that. And yeah, not a lot of benefits you can get from shrines here, of course. But, you know, whenever we have a non-threatening curse, okay, Amplify damage is going to be, together with Decrepify, as, <laughs> as they are nicely demonstrating for us, those are going to be the worst offenders when it comes to curses. Now, Ogre Axe, that's a nice, uh, well, Ogre Axe is an elite polearm, but it can only go up to three open sockets, and I can't see I've encountered a bug that uh, I will have to resolve by saving and quitting, I think, because we can't really see the... Uh, we can't really see their uh, their names and HP and everything. All right, let's try that again. That is, of course, very vital info that we want to have access to. Maybe you'll stay with me. Scepter, I guess we can pick up and do some management and get a potion refill. Alright, we're getting our financial situation ready for some gambling. Uh, next time we're ready for it. I think I was about to say at some point there that, of course, we do want to fight our way through the zones here. Uh, and, you know, and when it comes to Chaos Sanctuary, it's required to some extent, of course, with the seals and the special groups that we need to kill anyway. Wow, that was some burst due to that Amplify damage. That's a lovely, lovely experience to be in the Chaos Sanctuary. <laughs> yeah, never and underestimate this place. Can I please get affected by a different curse, guys? Any Oblivion Knights that want to be helpful in that regard? Somehow we managed to avoid that decrepify that Emilio got affected by. All right, quite a quite a hot situation here we have on our hands. Yeah, these venom lords, pit lords aren't even that receptive to static. Well, it does help a little, but not really worth the risk in a lot of situations to get close to a special group of these guys, to get a few statics in. All right, can we please have a moment? We cannot have a moment, we have to make sure. This, this might be it. Oh, a rare monarch. Play with a monarch, of course, the Holy Grail would be a. Uh, well, I guess we can get it to sell, of course, but, uh, you know, a magic monarch, the jeweler's mar monarch of deflecting the Holy Grail for Amazons. What do you need? Okay, that was really not worth it. And it's, this one is ethereal, so. Doesn't really matter for selling either, but 
whatever. Still 35k. Still it managed to to give us 35k. All right. I will take my words back. All right, Jamel up boosting our morale with that nice incantation. <laughs> and now we're back in action. Actually, should have refilled our full rejuves. Yes, stay there nicely, Oblivion Knight. Wait for that Meteor. few of them back there. Going in for a quick snipe I think is not going to be the best of ideas. Let's just get rid of especially all of these Doom Knights. They are undead so of course Emilio can't lifesteal off of them. Right and now the time has come for you Oblivion Knights. Didn't quite manage to snipe that guy. All right, there. All right. All right, I think before we proceed further, though... Okay, let's take this, this plate. Let's do a nice uh, refill here, a bit of management. Or sockets. I guess I should probably hold on to it instead of just sell it. Anyway, our main focus here are these full rejuves, of course. Right now, let's activate Grand Vizier. Alrighty then. Oh yeah, we have that false emerald from before. That caught my eye. Right, another ornate plate. I guess this is the money-making episode. Kind of cautiously going forward here. Just to avoid any stupid mistakes that I would perhaps be prone to making. Let's not even check. <laughs> Alright. Let's get nicely get rid of these Doom Knights. Of course, we don't want Emilio fighting them if we can avoid it. All right, Lord Decise is decisively not immune to fire. Sometimes he can be immune to both cold and fire, which would uh, have us again wishing for an elite polearm for Emilio, because it would be in his hands, of course, to get rid of that nuisance. Anyway, we're close to reaching the end here. Even though we had some hiccups along the way, we might just be able to finish this act successfully as well. And don't give me that you jinxed it stuff. I don't believe in jinxes and any of that any of that stuff, although I probably shouldn't be 
shouldn't be feeling comfortable about our success too early. Let's let's wait until it is properly finished. All right, Infector. Hiding deep in that dead end. Alright, Emilio, don't don't go in in the middle of like ten of these different guys. Yeah, you can clearly see what can happen there with your health dropping as it is. So I'm kind of teleporting Emilio back all the time, just so that he doesn't actually have to fight all surrounded in there. Unfortunately, it has caught my eye, though, that Infector of Souls is is going to be a problem. At least he doesn't have stone skin. But yeah, Emilio, here once again, you can prove while you are a member of this team. <laughs> Scarab shell boots, maybe? Okay, not. Not maybe. All right, now we are going to have to first do some management because our cube is, of course, full as always. But soon enough, I think we're going to reach for our Kelpie Snare once again. Just to increase the lifespan of Emilio in his uh, fight against Diablo. Also, uh, we can remind ourselves of uh, the fact that, of course, all of uh, Diablo's abilities on Hell are uh, kind of boosted. All of their properties, that is. And uh, that means that his uh, lightning and physical damage uh, beam that he does is going to start uh, away further uh, away from him. So Emilio is actually going to be safe if he stays in melee. That also, of course, uh, pertains to any melee player characters. That is a nice feature that in Nightmare it's a little bit iffy, but on Hell you can just safely stand in uh, Diablo's melee uh, range and you will be safe from that ability at least. And let's slow him down with our cold spells here as well. Because of course Holy Freeze doesn't work on bosses and now you can see by his slow movements that he is pretty doomed and I should be a little bit more optimal with aiming the frozen orbs and yes, we have done it. Uh, let's try to fit a couple of things uh, in there. Maybe for some cash once we once we restore Emilio to his proper weaponry. And then we can, just as a trophy, we can uh, get some stuff out of here. And I guess that's going to be it. Whew. I am happy that we got through this act. Well, I was about to say unscathed. There were, there were some dangerous moments in there, but thankfully we've done it. We have all of our quests completed, all of the waypoints flagged, and of course all of the super uniques we've killed along the way. Uh, so now let's just get a few more golden coins for our troubles. Come on. Can not transfer that. All right, whatever. We should be wasting our time with these poultry items, but whatever. Let us be happy for a moment that we have succeeded through yet another act, but now, unfortunately, the true pain is going to await us <laughs> in Act 5. I am really not looking forward to going through this. And I also realized that I didn't really elaborate on what I meant by thinking ahead in terms of our resistances, but we'll have plenty of time to elaborate on that, I guess, next time. So for now, I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.